Okay, so welcome to this first video in the playlist on voltage gated ion channels. And uh, in this first video, what we're going to do is tackle an incredibly important so uh, important uh, topic in all the physiology, which is the Nernst equation. Okay, and we're going to attempt to firstly give an intuitive explanation of what it actually is, and then we're going to actually attempt to give a derivation of it. Okay, so that's the topics for this video, and the derivation for this uh, for this equation is not required. It's not something that any doctor actually needs to know, um, but it is something that helps you to give it helps you more to have an intuitive understanding for where it comes from. If it increases your understanding of actually what it means, then it is worth doing. Okay, and I think it does. So um, that's what that's the topic for this video. So uh, what we're going to begin with is the basic intuition of what the Nernst equation is about. Okay, so let me just turn on another light. Okay, okay. So we're going to begin with the intuition of what the Nernst equation is about. So let's say uh, you have two glass containers. Okay, and we've got there. Actually, it's one big glass container. But basically, what we're going to do is we're going to put a membrane between them. So basically, if I draw out exactly, this is the top view. If I draw out a f attempt to draw out a three D picture of what we've got here, we've got like a glass container like this, and we have filled it up. Let's say just with water. Okay. And uh, so this is full with water, so I may, might draw some blue water in. So it's full up with water inside. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to put some membrane down the middle, basically, to separate it up into two separate compartments. And this is what is known as a semi-permeable membrane, which means that it allows some things to go between the two compartments, but not others. That's what semi-permeable means. So I will put that semi-permeable membrane. Okay, and now what we're going to do is we're going to put in salt into both sides. We're going to dissolve salt in both compartments. And basically, I'm going to put loads and loads of salt into um, compartment. In fact, I've put it loads and loads into compartment one. So let's label this, uh, this left compartment one and this compartment two. So we're going to put absolutely loads of salt, so lots and lots of salt into compartment one. And we're going to put hardly any salt into compartment two, but we have got some salt in both of them. And basically, this semi-permeable membrane is not going to allow water to move between the two compartments. It's not going to allow chloride anions to move between the two compartments. But it is going to use uh, allow sodium ions to move between the two compartments. Okay, and make no mistakes, when sodium chloride is dissolved in water, it does not remain bound. The sodium does not remain actually next to the chloride. Uh, they are bound by an ionic bond, which is an electrostatic interaction between the positively charged sodium and the negatively charged chloride atom. However, when you put them into water, water is a polar sol solvent, so it's perfectly stable uh, to you know, they, they basically come apart and become bound instead to the water, basically, because it's polar. Okay, uh, so basically what can happen is that the sodium can move freely across this membrane. There are little holes that allow the sodium through but don't allow the chloride through uh, and don't allow water through. Okay, so what can now happen basically is you have a massive great concentration of sodium on this side. Uh, so you've got absolutely loads of these sodium atoms on this side. So I'll draw lots and lots of them. These are these sodium cations everywhere, all over. And on this side, you have a much lower density of sodium cations. Now, basically, what's going to happen? They are both electrically neutral at the moment. This side is the same charge is neutral. This side is neutral because you've got sodium and the chloride atoms. The sodium ions are positively charged, but the chloride atoms are all negatively charged. So they all cancel each other out beautifully. And so at the moment, everything is totally neutral. However, if you've got absolutely loads on this side and you've got very few on this side, the probability that one of these cations is going to hit, let's say, a little tunnel, basically, one of these little channels that allows sodium to move through this semi-permeable membrane here, the probability that one of those sodium cations is just going to happen to hit and go through one of these channels is going to be much higher because you've got much more. They're much more dense in this compartment one than they are in this compartment two. So the chance that one is going to move that way is much bigger than the chance that one is going to move that way. So overall, if you leave this going, what's going to happen is that you're overall going to get sodium ions moving 
from compartment one to compartment two because you're going to they're going to both they're going to move in both directions but um, because you've got such a smaller concentration here um, then overall the number coming this way from compartment one to compartment two is going to greatly outweigh the number moving from compartment two to compartment one now that causes a problem because what's going to happen is that you're going to move some sodium ions that should have been in compartment one into compartment two so uh, let's label the green, the sodium ions that should have been in compartment one that are now in compartment two. I'm going to draw those green, okay? So you've got some green uh, sodium ions in this compartment two one, basically over here. And just sticking to convention now, now label all of the all of. The, let's show the um, sodium ions that were originally in, uh, in compartment one as green. Now, of course, a few. A few of the orange ones will have moved into compartment one, but basically one of these orange ones has moved for four of these green ones that has moved this way, just by probability and chance. What's more likely, a green one moving this way or an orange one moving that way? It's obviously the green one moving this way. Okay, but that causes a problem, because you've now got three positive charges on this side that were not originally on that side, and you've lost three charges from this side. So basically, this side becomes positively charged, and this side becomes negatively charged overall. Okay, because the chloride anions, remember, they cannot move. They are stuck. They cannot pass this membrane. Water cannot pass this membrane. Only the sodium ions can pass this membrane. Now, once you start developing a positive charge on this side of the membrane, and that happens very, very, very quickly, you hardly have to move any sodium ions at all uh, to make a quite big positive charge build up on this side. So you basically end up with a positive charge building up on this side. Uh, and basically that starts repelling these sodium ions. So the sodium ions that are moving, uh, remember the sodium ions have these channels through the semi-permeable membrane, so they can still move. But the thing is, these ones now are going to be less likely to move across here because the positive charge is repelling them. So you can imagine if you want that they're all going to end up, um, if I draw another picture, they're all going to end up sort of moving away from the membrane because they don't want to be near uh, the positive charge. So you can imagine them all moving over here. So they're much less likely, basically. That's not a, an over-exaggeration, but that gives you the intuition for why the probability of them moving across the membrane is going to get much smaller. And the probability of one of these moving this way is going to get bigger because they're all going to be repelled from the positive charge also. So they're going to be sort of moving towards the membrane, basically. And again, it's it is an over-exaggeration because obviously the positive charge is the ions themselves, so having them all grouped together is not a, not a good representation at all because that's the exact thing that they're trying to avoid. But the idea is that a few are going to end up more close to this membrane than they would have been if there wasn't the positive charge. So basically the probability of them moving this way increases and the probability that they move this way, in fact I'll do it more slowly than that, positive, the probability that you move this way is going to decrease. So, um, uh, so um, let me draw this arrow bigger, basically, so that I show it's decreased. Okay, so this one has decreased from that original one, and this one going this way has increased from that original one. Okay, until the point where, at the moment, I've still got this, high, this the amount moving this way bigger than the amount moving this way. So that means that still some more are going to move. So some green ones are going to move this way still. Uh, there's still going to be a net movement of charge this way. So that will mean that this positive charge gets even bigger until the point, basically, that you have the perfect uh, electrical potential difference between these two sides. You have a positive charge on this side and a negative charge on this side. And basically, that, the difference between these, the amount by which these are different, the electrical potential difference between these two compartments. So the sum electrical potential difference of compartment one and the sum electrical potential difference of compartment two. Um, compartment one is going to become negatively charged. Compartment two is going to become positively charged. So if we look at the voltage from one to two, which is the electrical potential difference at two minus the electrical potential difference at one, I how much you go up in electrical potential uh, by moving from compartment one to compartment two. Um, that's going to be a positive number, basically, because this one's going to be higher than this one. Okay, and you get basically to the point where this is the perfect value, this difference between them is the perfect value that uh, this, the, the um, probability that one on this side will move in that direction uh, has 
uh, got small enough and the probability that one on this side will move in the opposite direction has got big enough that they are actually perfectly equal and then you've got an equilibrium because the number crossing now uh, is the same and you therefore have no net movement of charge so it doesn't change anymore so basically you end up with an equilibrium okay so basically what happens overall to summarize the process again you start off with different concentrations of sodium on either side. The concentration gradient causes more sodium to move from compartment 1 to compartment 2 than move from compartment 2 to compartment 1. That means that there is a net movement of sodium ions into compartment 2. That makes compartment 1 negatively charged and compartment 2 positively charged. As you move more and more sodium ions into compartment 2, uh, then the positive charge, the difference in these two, um, the electrical potential of these two compartments gets bigger and that results, eventually it gets big enough that the repulsion of the sodium going, um, the repulsion of the sodium, from uh, the electrical force driving sodium to move from compartment 2 to compartment 1 and stopping uh, sodium from moving to, from compartment 1 to compartment 2 uh, is great enough to balance the, um, the uh, concentration gradient. And basically the number moving in either direction becomes equal and at that point you get an equilibrium. And the Nernst equation, which is the equation that says that the voltage or the equilibrium voltage, so I might put the equilibrium voltage, is equal to uh, equilibrium voltage, and I want to put underneath that from what compartment 1 to compartment 2 is equal to RT over ZF times the natural logarithm of the concentration of, let's say, an ion in um, compartment 1, so in this case sodium in compartment 1, over the charge of sodium in compartment 2. This is the Nernst equation, basically, and this tells you um, what the uh, equilibrium potential from, the, what the what value of voltage from 1 to vol compartment 2, i.e. how much more positively charged, how, what, how much higher is the electrical potential difference of compartment 2 than compartment 1 when you finally get to this equilibrium, if the concentrations of sodium uh, in compartment 1 is equal to this, and the compartment the concentration of sodium in compartment 2 is equal to this. R is just a constant. Z is just the, um, the charge on the sodium ions, but it's the charge in terms of how big it is compared to the electron's charge. So basically, you just put plus 1 in there. So um, you, it, it's not charging coulombs. It's, you don't have to put in 1.6 times 10 to the ni minus 19 coulombs. No, uh, this has already taken account of all the fact. You just have to put in what it is in terms of plus 1, minus 1, plus 2, minus 2, etc. And then uh, F is the Faradayan constant, which is another uh, constant. And we're going to attempt to see the derivation of this equation, but at least I hope already you understand at least what it is telling you. And another thing that I need to discuss is uh, these concentrations, the sodium concentration in compartment 1 and the sodium concentration in compartment 2, those are the starting concentrations, basically. So you start by putting a certain concentration of sodium into compartment 1 and start, start by putting a certain concentration into sodium 2. You might get confused because aren't these concentrations going to change? Because, you know, some of these sodium ions from, uh, from compartment 1 have moved into compartment 2. And you're right, you are right, but the number that have moved, the number that have moved is so tiny that throughout this entire experiment you can approximate it as though the, com change, as though the concentration of sodium in the compartment 1 is constant, that it is equal to this, so it's equal to the starting concentration, and you can approximate that the concentration of sodium in compartment 2 is also equal to that starting concentration because the number that actually moved in order to create this electrical potential difference is tiny, tiny compared to the order of moles. Moles, remember, but of one mole of sodium, which is like 20 grams of sodium, so not much, uh, is um, is 10 times uh, sorry, is 6 times 10 to the 23 uh, actual sodium atoms. So basically, the number that move I think is in the order of millions. So it's nothing compared to 10 to the 23. So you do not need to worry about the fact that. Are, are we putting in the initial concentrations or are we putting in the final concentrations? And when you see the derivation of this equation, you'll see that actually what these should be, they should be the final concentrations. Um, 
but uh, as I say, we can approximate the final concentrations as being equal to these e e uh, being equal to these initial concentrations because hardly anything moves. So you can approximate it as though the chamber one retains this initial concentration of sodium, and container two contains its initial. Uh, concentration of sodium. And as far as this equation is concerned, you can just plug in what you initially put in. And of course, the concentration of sodium in compartment one that you initially put in is going to be the same as whatever the concentration of sodium chloride was that you put in, uh, i.e. salt that you put in there, and the same for compartment two. Okay, so in the next video, what we'll do is actually try and attempt a derivation of this equation.